Improvising jazz is all about rhythm. And in this lesson you'll learn to gain total rhythmic freedom. Maybe you'll find my method and exercises somehow a bit crazy and silly. But nevertheless, they are very effective, applicable and powerful. And embracing some craziness and silliness may just be what we need to make our music even better. Now, before we get on with it, let me try to demonstrate a simple jazz solo. With my foot, I do the strict, steady, metronome main beats, like this. And on the piano, I'll try to float more independently and freely, playing music. Well, we'll see how it goes. First, I'll show you some tips about how to make our steady foot, our locomotive, go. Then we'll do useful exercises that'll teach us to gain total rhythmic freedom while our foot locomotive stays on the track. So, we'll learn to multitask. Then we'll play the piano and make music out of it. Then I'll show you an easy beginner tip that can help you with uh, the exercises. Next, I'll try to do the ultimate expert geeky exercise, just for fun. Well, I'm not sure I can do it convincingly. Well, we'll see how it goes. And finally, we'll add left hand chords to our right hand phrases. This is a new jazz lesson and my name is Oliver Prey. First, let's take a good look at our footwork. The foot is our locomotive that always keeps us on the steady metronome track, no matter what happens. So it's important that we, um, for a start, work with and exercise our footsteps thoroughly. I always use my left foot to do the steps, so that my right foot is free to use uh, the sustain pedal if needed. I alternately step my heel and forefoot so that my heel is on the first main beat and the forefoot on uh, the second beat, like this. One, two, one, two, one, two. Now, let's try this out with our metronome. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now try to get a good and steady locomotive going. Try to make the foot sound good together with uh, the metronome. When we have a good feeling about this, we are ready to move on. Now we need to learn to multitask. 
the methods in use might seem quite funny and silly, but I'm sure you'll find them very useful. The trick is to be able to be totally independent of our steady foot locomotive. So basically, we must be able to do other stuff while our locomotive stays on the metronome track. So let's work on this. For a start, while your foot is stepping steadily, try to uh, look out, look out the window, or look at a painting on the wall or a book in the bookcase. Look at anything but your foot. And consult your locomotive on a regular basis. Is it uh, still on the track? Good. Then look out the window again. Maybe make some uh, small thoughts about anything. What do you see? The sky, maybe? What color is the sky? Again, consult your locomotive. Is it uh, still going steadily? Good. Let your dreams flow. What are we going to have for supper? Consult your locomotive. Good. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> is the locomotive still on the track? Good. The idea is to exercise our brain to control two mental paths at the same time. The locomotive and the free thought. So right now we exercise the art of multitasking. The next step is to try to talk out loud. This can be very difficult, I know. So maybe just do a little simpler speech for a start. We could, for example, say, this exercise may seem silly, but uh, I really don't care because it works. This exercise may seem silly, but I really don't care because it works. Try to make your words float independently in relation to uh, the footsteps, so that we kind of get the feeling that the foot and the talking are two completely different words. This exercise may seem silly, but I really don't care because it works. This exercise may seem silly, but I really don't care because it works. <laughs> The next step is uh, to talk more randomly. Just talk nonsense, like I always do. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So again, right now we exercise to manage two separate events inside our brain simultaneously the strict main beat locomotive and the more natural floating nonsense talk. Blah, 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 blah. If your foot runs off the metronome track, don't panic. Just give the locomotive 100% attention for a moment. Get it back on the track. 
And when we are ready, resume the nonsense talk. Blah, 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 blah. Gradually we learn to make our foot locomotive steady and precise on the main metronome beats, no matter what happens. When we can do that, we'll definitely master the art of multitasking. The next step is to try to sing some silly vocal lines. Just sing something random. It doesn't have to sound good or anything. But again, try to make your vocal lines float independently compared to the foot locomotive. Do dear papa, do da 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 Yes, I know, these exercises may seem quite silly and crazy. But we have to be silly and crazy, because that's what music is all about. <laughs> so, now we are ready to transfer the exercises to the piano. I'll show you how. The really great thing is that already by now, we have improvised jazz. Now the trick is to make our fingers do the vocal lines. So let's do, for example, a pentatonic hand grip. Now in traditional music schools, we learn to rehearse fixed numbers of subbeats, like for example, two, three, four, or six subbeats for every metronome main beat. These exercises are for sure very good and important, but they'll never teach us the independence and freedom of rhythm. So what we need to do is to make a mental connection between our fingers and our free-floating vocal lines. So let's try to push a finger each time we make a vocal sound. We don't have to sing the actual pitches we play. The important thing here is to just connect the free rhythm of our voice to our fingers. Blah, 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 blah. We can move the hand grip to different positions on the keys to get some progression into our play. Try this out with our metronome. And we start up our foot locomotive. And here we go. Again, try to make your vocal fingers float freely on top of uh, the foot main beats. And 
and on a regular basis consult your locomotive. Are we still on the track? Good. Then continue your vocal fingers and make your music and your locomotive into two independent worlds. So, now you may ask, when multitasking, keeping our locomotive and music separated, do we not just play totally out of rhythm? Isn't our piano improvisation just totally out of sync? Indeed not. Believe me, the audience can hear that we have a heavy steam locomotive going on, not just in the foot but also as a solid foundation in our subconsciousness. We have a strong self-confidence about ourselves, our rhythm and our piano solo. There's no doubt, we are free, but in control. The outcome is that we are now able to express ourselves to a much higher degree because we do not have to play all our notes on uh, the fixed beats and subbeats. We are free to stretch and bend the rhythm. I know, multitasking like this is not easy. I've practiced this a lot to make it work. But I know a little beginner tip that can make the exercises a lot easier. Let me show you. It may seem contradictory, but if we simply double up the tempo on uh, the metronome, everything actually becomes much easier. The trick is to maintain the same slow tempo uh, in the foot. So now we have two metronome beats for every single foot main beat, right? So now we have a more solid metronome grid to hold on to. Let's try this out. This is much easier, right? The extra metronome beat in between uh, the main foot beats helps us to keep the locomotive on uh, the metronome track. When playing with the band and if we play fast, I often tend to locate the slower half-speed a la brie main beats in my foot. Just one foot step for every second beat. In this way I also avoid that my foot jumps crazily around on the fast beats like this. I find this quite stressful. I prefer a much slower, steady steam locomotive. In this way I'm more relaxed, also when playing fast. And I can play music better. <laughs> Double up the speed on the metronome is a good beginner exercise for sure, in the start. 
But later on, we must also be able to hold on to only a few metronome main beats. It's more difficult, that's for sure, but it encourages us to play more freely, because we are not tied up or restrained by the extra metronome beat in between. So we will, to a much higher degree, teach ourselves to loosen up and be free. Before adding the left hand chords to our play, let me demonstrate the ultimate expert geeky exercise to gain total rhythmic freedom. I'm not sure that I can do it right, but I'll try. Well, we'll see how it goes. Okay, the idea is to play a simple pattern, uh, for example like this. And then we try to make a gradual, smooth change uh, in tempo. Slightly faster. Slightly faster. Faster. Slower. Slower. faster, and so on. Well, this is easy, but not together with our foot locomotive, I can assure you. So let's hear how it goes. Foot. And we start out slow. Faster. 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 Slower. If we can do this, we have for sure gained total independence between our two mental events, the foot locomotive and our piano play. I actually think this is going okay, so far. <laughs> Let's stop this crazy but also fun exercise before I fail completely. <laughs> this was just an experimental detour. Let's get back on track. Now I'll show you a really easy method to add left hand chords to our improvisation. The trick is to simply do our pentatonic hand grip in the left hand as well. We can thin out the hand grip to form different variations of our left hand chords. And then we can double the grip position in the, the right hand. And we can move around to different positions. If we 
we want to make, for example, a Dorian solo, we can simply stack three grip positions in a row of fifths. So here we have C Dorian. B-flat Dorian A Dorian and so on. Row of fifths is just a mnemonic rule. We can for sure mix the positions. In another lesson, we learn much more about this technique and how to play all the seven modes by using a simple pentatonic head grip. I'll paste uh, a link below. Now, let's start the metronome. Foot locomotive. And here we go. At some point, we may feel ready to turn off the metronome. And now the trick is to keep the steady foot locomotive going without changing the tempo. And then we improvise on the top, like a free bird singing in the early springtime. As you may know, all new jazz lessons are free, public and for everybody. I have no sponsors and I sell no merchandise. I'm just little me trying to make music the epic center of everything. So if you want to help me keep going, you are of course so much welcome to make a voluntary donation. You can also just give me a nice like. Small support makes me very happy and it means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Many warm regards from Oliver.